Hi, folks. This is Dr. Rob Sivis, and I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And recently, uh, in 2020, the um, U.S. Dietary Guidelines came out. They come out every five years, and they come out with guidelines that are there for the American public um, as supposedly best practices ways of eating. And it is awful. It is a way to get sick and develop metabolic disease, obesity, and diabetes for the most part. However, instead of just demonizing the entire document, I think it is important that we break down because all of these awful suggestions from them, high carbohydrate, low fat diets, whatever it may be, there are certain integral parts that are of huge value that sometimes we blow off. And the thing that they promote very heavily is a plant-based diet, but, and it's kind of a bizarre juxtaposition, they hate red, me red meat, they hate fat, but they love fish. They love fish, they love seafood, and they strongly promote fish and seafood in the U.S. Dietary Guidelines. And I, as a ketogenic, keto carnivore practitioner, strongly support that notion. Fish, especially the smaller fish, are one of the best things that you can eat. And the entire life cycle of that fish, starting with fish eggs, salmon roe, fish eggs, when we do sashimi, which is um, raw Japanese fish, I always try to get some form of roe with that. Think about this. A little fish egg is an entire fish. It's got all the oils. It's very fatty. It is a great source of fish oil, and it, it, which is your DHA, EPA, um, uh, uh, linoleic acid. It is a great source of three and six omega fatty acids, but it's also fully enriched with all the vitamins and minerals that are required to make a new fish. And then if you go up the chain and you eat some of the uh, smaller filtration animals, the oysters, the mussels, uh, the shrimp, the smaller seafoods, also huge bang for nutritional buck. And then if you eat the smaller fish, the sardines, the mackerel, the white anchovies, those are all wild. They're not cultivated. So you know they're wild, wild caught, and you can eat pretty much the entire fish, maybe minus the head. So you're getting in the skin, you're getting in the bones, you're getting in the, the, the meat, you're getting in the organs, you're getting in everything that has value in a fish. And why is this, why is fish so important? Particularly because of, they contain an abundance of essential fatty acids. The body is very good at producing different types of fat, but it cannot produce the three and six omega fatty acids that are essential to be consumed. And in particular, I've got another episode coming out on Alzheimer's disease, but the ApoE4 um, lipoprotein allele, which is so common, between 30 and 65% of people have at least one copy, and it promotes in sig staggeringly significant higher rates Alzheimer's disease, primarily based on the 3 omega fatty acid deficiency. Also for children, uh, especially young babies with growing brains, resulting in autism spectrum disorders. And I've got a bunch of talks on that. But the consumption of fish is an incredibly valuable, incredibly healthy thing. Far better than any minerals and vitamins that you can consume, particularly smaller fish. You know, I was raised on cod liver oil. And then Kellogg started putting vitamin D in their cereal, and cod liver oil went by the wayside, and suddenly we could eat all these fortified cereals. Well, that wasn't so good. It hasn't ended up so well. But getting back to those basics, fish liver oils, fish, fish eggs, and you can go up the chain. You can eat the larger fish, your salmons, your tunas, fatten them up. But fish is a fundamentally important aspect, I believe, of a healthy carnivore diet. If two things, number one, you like to eat them. You don't have to if you don't like them. And number two, if you're not allergic to them. But we don't think about that anymore. We're thinking ribeye steak, ribeye steak, red meat, red meat. I love red meat. I have no issue with it. I've got to remind myself all the time to do the fish and the seafood. But folks, try to make that purposeful in your life. Try to get some fish, try to get some seafood, try to get some fish eggs in to your diet one way or another or another on a regular basis. Your brain in particular will thank you. It is a great source 
of anti-inflammatory DHA molecules. Also, minerals and vitamins come in in abundance. I use those small fish instead of GNC as my source of minerals, vitamins, trace elements, and micronutrients in exactly the right proportion that my body needs because we evolved along shorelines as our human species. And it's got a great source of salt, a ton of salt in fish, especially sea fish. So there really is no downside to being fish dominant. And in that, I do support the 2020 USDA dietary guidelines. A lot of garbage in there, but the fish angle I do support. Hope that helps. If you're interested in a consultation with us about any of the metabolic diseases, diabetes, obesity, give us a shout, 561-517-0642. Text us to that number or WhatsApp us to that number if you're from overseas. And if you like this video, if it resonates with you, if you want more content, subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell so that our new videos, when they drop, will show up. You can swipe them away if you don't like them, but at least you'll see the title, you'll see the topic, and you may say, hmm, let me educate myself. I hope this helps. Leave some comments down below. We'll get interactive on the comments. Till next time, take care. I am the Carb Addiction Doc.